This Week with Bob Mueller on News 2. This week. We had a patient who was in heart failure, who needed an abortion. Her pregnancy was fine, but the pregnancy would have killed her. Planned Parenthood takes on Tennessee's nearly total abortion ban for clarity about when a woman's life can be saved. People deserve not only access, but convenience and affordability. And that's a key part of the equation. The Biden administration wants to require health insurers to cover the cost of condoms and birth control, expanding health care coverage so Americans can get contraceptives for free. When you have constituents that, that come out from the voting polls and they tell you that this is what was happening, you know, there's real concern in their face and in their voice you know, about the process. Early voting is supposed to be more convenient, but some in Tennessee say a problem with the touchscreen machines is making things more difficult. More in our This Week cover story. I think it's tough, I'll be honest with you. I think, um, you know, the last time the country was this divided was probably during the Depression. Um, and it was World War II that fixed that, not politics. And, you know, suddenly there was some common thing that everybody could come together in support of. And, I, you know, I hate to say it, but I almost think it's going to take some kind of threat or some major event that's like that to, to bring things back together or, or a president who really wants to do it. And a conversation with the former mayor of Nashville, former governor of Tennessee, Phil Bredesen, on the state of politics leading into a presidential election. Hello again and welcome to another edition of This Week. Election Day a little more than a week away and tonight you will hear from the former Nashville mayor and former Tennessee governor, Phil Bredesen, on the state of politics here in Tennessee. The Biden administration wants health insurers to cover the cost of contraceptives and early voting reveals a problem with voting machines. More on our This Week cover story, but we begin with Planned Parenthood saying a court ruling that clarified when women are sick enough to receive an abortion in Tennessee does not go far enough. The calls for clarity on Tennessee's near ban on abortions answered by a three-judge panel late last week. Their ruling names the specific medical conditions that qualify for a medical exception to the abortion ban, the only exception allowed under Tennessee law. It also temporarily blocks discipline for doctors. I'm sure that there is um, a great deal of relief. But Tennessee advocates for Planned Parenthood say the ruling doesn't cover every medical issue that puts the life of the mother at risk during pregnancy. We had a patient who was in heart failure who needed an abortion. Her pregnancy was fine, but the pregnancy would have killed her. We had patients who were receiving chemotherapy for cancer. The pregnancies were fine, but the chemotherapy would have damaged the fetus and they wanted to continue with the chemotherapy so that they could live and be there for their families and their other children. Those kinds of medical emergencies are not named uh, in the lawsuit. Planned Parenthood hopes the issue is enough fuel to flip some Republican seats blue this election. They've spent close to $1 million in phone banks, canvassing, and paid communications, also targeting the Republican supermajority, making the laws the group says don't align with what the majority of Tennesseans want. According to a nonpartisan poll by Vanderbilt University, 75% of Tennesseans who participated support abortion exceptions, including for rape and incest, which state law doesn't allow. Last year, some members of the legislative leadership told us they don't think that should change. I think the current law is adequate and, and uh, it protects the life of the mother. And uh, I think that's the, you know, the big thing that we wanted, wanted to do. And I'd be satisfied leaving the current law where it is. I fully support the law that we have on the books right now relative to, to abortion. Um, I believe life begins at conception and, uh, and should be protected. Reporting in Nashville, I'm Tori Gessner. The White House wants to require health insurers to cover the cost of birth control. The Biden administration just proposed a new rule that would expand health care coverage so Americans can get contraceptives for free. Washington, D.C. correspondent Hannah Brandt has more. Soon, picking up contraceptives from your local pharmacy could be free. People deserve not only access, but convenience and affordability. And that's a key part of the equation. California pharmacist Dr. Sally Raffi says the Biden administration is offering that solution. On Monday, Health Secretary Javier Becerra announced a new federal proposal to change how insurers cover contraceptives. You should not have to pay out of pocket to get the contraceptions, uh, contraceptives that you need. 
Right now, private health insurers do have to cover the cost of contraception when it's prescribed. But the Biden administration's new proposal would require insurers to fully cover contraception without a prescription. The largest expansion of access to contraceptives in over a decade. The rule would cover condoms, birth control pills, and morning after pills. And White House advisor Jennifer Klein says this gives people more choices. Really puts these decisions in women's hands so that women can get the care, the health care that they need. Plus, she argues the rule would provide critical flexibility so women can switch birth control without having to go through a lengthy or expensive doctor's visit. This will end the um, process that women have had to go through to apply for exceptions to their health care provider. Now the rule will go through a 60-day comment period before it can be finalized. In Washington, I'm Hannah Brandt. Loneliness in Tennessee appears to be worse than the national average. New census data shows almost 43 percent of adults in Tennessee reported feeling lonely. State Capitol reporter Tori Gessner spoke with experts who are not surprised and looked into the unique factors that may be contributing to this growing sense of isolation. In a state that's connected by its music and culture, many Tennesseans are singing a different tune, one of loneliness. A new survey by the U.S. Census Bureau found almost 43 percent of people polled in the volunteer state say they feel lonely compared to 40 percent nationwide. It's a silent struggle that isn't surprising to experts. I know we have a lot going on in our society these days and especially here in Tennessee. Many social and personal factors can lead to feeling lonely, including financial struggles, strained relationships and busy routines. While some may assume the older population is more susceptible, Nathan Miller with Volunteer Behavioral Health says more young people are now suffering too. Social media, you know, especially in schools and, and this type of thing where you have bullying, you have intimidation, and you say you didn't have that thing. If you did, it was, you know, cut off. The children had a break. But nowadays it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week that they can be subjected to this type of behavior and, and these types of issues. The feeling of loneliness can even take a physical toll. Things like increased hypertension, uh, worse diabetes, um, things like depression, anxiety, um, uh, even things as much as sort of suicidal thoughts. So while it feels like loneliness is very much an emotional piece, um, it shows up in our bodies. A serious problem that's worse in Tennessee compared to the national average. Some blame the state's rural geography, possibly isolating some from accessing care. But others say because it's such a significant issue, the reasons behind it need to be studied. Sure, we could say it's about that it happens because people in rural areas, those people might feel highly connected. It could be that there are people in the cities. It could be that there's a huge Part of our population that Tennessee has deemed unacceptable. And so those people have laws being made against them. So there's a number of reasons why people might be lonely, and we need to study those and figure out what those are so we can start helping people. Reporting in Nashville, I'm Tori Gessner. Early voting is supposed to be more convenient, but a problem with the touchscreen machines is making it more difficult. Some voters in Davidson and Shelby County say the machine is choosing a different candidate than the one they select. Election officials say there is a fix. State Capitol reporter Tori Gessner explains. People cast their vote to make sure their voice is heard. But in some parts of Tennessee, it seems the machines have other plans. When you have constituents that, that come out from the voting polls and they tell you that this is what was happening, you know, there's real concern in their face and in their voice you know, about the process. The concern? Memphis State Representative Antonio Parkinson says he and other lawmakers have received multiple complaints from voters who say when they selected a candidate, the machine jumped and highlighted another. It's happening in Davidson County, too. So if you put it on here, sometimes you can get it, and sometimes it flips up to the one above it because you're touching that line. Elections Administrator Jeff Roberts says the problem is new and it has nothing to do with the integrity of the machines, which are all tested before they go out. This is the first election since COVID when we didn't use the stir sticks. We knew pretty quickly what the issue was. Robert says the box in the corner is too small for people's fingers. Davidson County election officials are giving out stir sticks to help with precision and posting signs encouraging voters to press the name of the candidate, not the box. The Shelby County Election Commission also posting a how to video on social media. You don't aim for the box. You aim for the middle.
my question to them was, if they cannot press the box for their candidate, then why do we even have the box on the screen? Representative Parkinson is calling for more accountability, reminding voters to double check their ballots, hoping the issue doesn't cause people to lose faith in the process. The state of Tennessee is one of the worst states in the country when it comes to voter turnout. We don't need anything else to make people feel like it is unnecessary or a chore uh, to go out and cast their vote and be part of the process. Reporting in Nashville, I'm Tori Gessner. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment.